Welcome to Savage Kitchen. Today, we are gonna be making a batched cocktail. This is perfect for when you're entertaining and you just don't wanna also play bartender or maybe there's just not enough time for you to also make drinks and cook and host and do all the things. Batching cocktails is a super simple process. You wanna take the ratio of whatever your cocktail is, your favorite cocktail, whatever it is that you wanna batch, and then simply increase the scale. Today, we're gonna to be batching a variation on a Manhattan, and I'll get into the recipe in just a second. But first, let's talk about things you're gonna need, things that are gonna help make your life a little bit easier. You're gonna need a large vessel to mix your cocktail in. Your standard mixing glass just isn't gonna be big enough. This is literally the largest bowl that I have, so we're going into my stand mixer glass bowl. Second, you're gonna need something to put your batched cocktail in when you're done. If you're making a small batch, I'm a big fan of going back into a bottle if you're emptying a whole bottle. However, if you're starting with a fresh bottle and emptying a whole bottle, whatever you're adding into that cocktail isn't gonna fit in one bottle because physics. So you're gonna need, especially for the recipe that we're doing, two 750 milliliter bottles to go into, or a large decanter, or a punch bowl, whatever you wanna do. Just make sure that the vessel that you're putting the liquid in after is large enough to accommodate all of the liquid that we are going to be adding to the recipe. Next, to make life easy, you probably want a funnel. Luckily, this, this bowl actually does have a, a pour spout, but if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm super messy, funnel is a really good idea. Next, methods of measurement. We're working in pretty large batches here, so I actually have like full on measuring cups out. Your typical cocktail jigger isn't gonna cut it for this. Maybe for some small measurements, depending on how intricate your recipe is, and potentially for bitters, we'll get into that later, but you're gonna need things that you can measure with. If you just wanna play fast and loose and we're doing simple ratios and you want a full bottle of this and half bottle of that, I'm a fan, you know me. Measuring's not really my forte. And then lastly, a big mistake I think people make when batching cocktails at home is not adding water. Typically, you are diluting a cocktail when you add ice to it and either stir or shake. That time spent stirring and shaking is diluting your cocktail with water content. So now when batching a cocktail, we're not chilling it right away. We're not stirring this down over ice. We're not shaking it. So we need to add in the commensurate amount of water to properly dilute our cocktail so that it tastes right and doesn't set anybody's throat on fire. All right, so let's talk measurements and ratios. If we're not doing a very simple whole bottle of this, half bottle and that, you're gonna wanna figure out your milliliters versus ounces versus cups. <laughs> there are lots of conversion charts online to do this, and I'm going to give you the specific recipe for this cocktail. And I had to write it down because math, and I, there's no way I would get these numbers right. Not that they're complicated, it's just a lot of them, and I want you guys to have the differences between milliliters, ounces, and cups. So let's get into what this particular recipe is gonna be. We're doing a variation on a black Manhattan. So we're gonna use the Noble Oak Double Oak Rye. Thank you very much to my friends at Noble Oak for sending this to me. Uh, we're going to use a really nice, this is actually one of my favorite vermouths. This is the Carpano Antica, absolutely delicious, sweet red vermouth. And then we're going to use Amaro Averna. And if you're unfamiliar with Amaro's, I have a video that is most of my thoughts on Amaro's and a comparison between like eight or nine of them. I don't know. There was, there's many, many bottles down there and we tried them all. Uh, for a black Manhattan, this one is fantastic. But if you don't have this, I particularly like Montenegro with this. Amaro Nonino would be really nice. Chinar would also be nice. Lots of options. But if you have the Averna, that's typically used in a black Manhattan. For bitters, we're gonna be using um, this wooden nuts. Angostura bitters are absolutely perfect for this, but bitters I think are a great way to sort of experiment with flavors. And since I'm batching these for Thanksgiving, I kind of wanted to give this a more fall twist. So pecan, What's in this? Pecan, coffee, and oak. Sounds delicious. So this particular recipe that we're making is a big batch. We're gonna end up with roughly 14 four ounce cocktails from this batch. That's a lot, but I'm hosting a big Thanksgiving and probably I would say eight to 10 of those people are cocktail drinkers and I wanna make sure there is at least one batched cocktail per person. 
the bar is going to be open. They can have whatever else they want. But for ease of getting a drink in somebody's hands when they get in the door, this is how I like to do it. We're starting with an entire bottle of rye, a 750 ml of this Noble Oak rye. And then I'm going to be using, I have to check my measurements. I'm going to be using 375 milliliters, so half a bottle of this sweet vermouth. And then we're going to be doing a quarter bottle of our Amaro. And then we're going to be adding in roughly a cup of water. I'm going to put all of the very precise measurements in milliliters, ounces, and cups in the description below so you can see the differences and just make it easy if you want to make this exact cocktail. Oh, it's my favorite sound. Mm, might be my favorite smell too. In we go. It's just really satisfying. Get it all out. All right, save this because future batches can go into this. Okay, so that 750 milliliter bottle of Noble Oak was equivalent to roughly three cups of liquid, right? Yes, so 750 milliliters is about 25 ounces and it's about three cups of liquid. It's like 3.1 cups of liquid. So for our second ingredient, for our sweet vermouth, we're gonna be doing half that. So that means 375 milliliters, which is roughly, I'm gonna check, 12 and a half ounces or a cup and a half. Well, that's only a cup, but I need a, need a bigger thing, okay. I mean, I could also just eyeball it and go half the bottle, but with these dark glass bottles, sometimes it's a little hard to see. Here we go. Cup and a half. This really is my, my favorite sweet vermouth. So now for our Averna, we're gonna be adding a quarter of a bottle. So what is that? That's 187 milliliters. It is 12 and a half ounces, or it's three quarters of a cup. So let's measure that out. feels very witchy doing it this way, like this is a cauldron. And then I pre-measured out my uh, water, which I'm doing, again, 187 milliliters, which is roughly six ounces. Did I give you the wrong measurements before? I think I just gave you the wrong measurements on the Amaro. I did, I'm sorry, I just said the wrong thing. I didn't pour in the wrong thing. So on the Amaro, it's a quarter of a, a 750 ml bottle, it's six ounces, or it's three quarters of a cup. Those are all the same measurement and then also same amount of water so 187 milliliters six ounces or three quarters of a cup which i already poured in okay let's talk bitters now ideally you could just pop the little top off of your bitters and pour instead of doing 20 dashes which we're about to do because i don't know if you can see but this particular bitters bottle doesn't allow me to pluck out that little top so we're just gonna start dashing. Yeah, a few more. So I did roughly 20 dashes and that is approximately three quarters of an ounce. It's a little harder to say because each bottle dashes slightly different, kind of depends on like how heavy a hand you have also. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Taste it, if it, does, if it tastes off, well, you screwed up. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give this a taste. And keep in mind, this is room temperature because we didn't chill it, but this is gonna let me know if our balance is just like way off. Mm. That's fantastic. Mm. Okay, let's bottle this up, shall we? So grab my funnel, grab my cleaned bottle. This makes me feel like a scientist. Okay. We're gonna stop there with this one. Oh, glorious. <laughs> Oh, this is such a good idea. <laughs> so here's the deal. 
You can make these in advance. You should make these in advance to take the stress out of entertaining. I would make these up to several days in advance, pop them in the fridge, let them stay cool. You can put them in the freezer also. The alcohol content is high enough in here, it's not gonna freeze. I would love to see what other recipes you guys try, what you like to batch, what different vessels you like to put them in. Uh, let me know how it goes. Cheers, friends. Thank you.